got a ring light, so let's see if this thing works. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Not Your Type, a channel all about me and T1D. And y'all, it has been a while, and for that, I am very, very sorry. But I've been very, very busy the past couple of months, weeks, year, um, that I haven't really had time to sit down and film a video. So today we're going to be talking about something that I've really been working towards for this entire year since the start of my YouTube channel. But before that, I just want to give you a quick rundown of what I've been up to the past couple of months. In January, I started my adventure of student teaching in the music classroom. And in May, once I finished that up, I graduated from college. Big thing off my to-do list, and I'm so grateful for all the supporters that helped get me there throughout the four years and have gotten me now into my new position where in the fall I will begin teaching middle school choir. So I'm very excited to get that ball rolling and start working on my classroom this summer and finally have my own space where I get to do what I love every single day. That quick rundown does not even cover how busy it made me, but on top of that, I was preparing for the dream job of Miss Iowa, and that's what I'm gonna share with you today. I started competing in the Miss Iowa program when I was 10 years old, so it's been 12 years of incredible moments and growth throughout this program, and I'm gonna do probably a whole other video on what that journey has been like for me and everything I've experienced, but this story starts back in August of 2021 when I was crowned Miss Greater Des Moines 2022. The night I was crowned is honestly a blur. It was such a dream come to life for me because I not only worked so hard to achieve this goal, but also because this title was a dream title of mine to represent the city that has become my second home, where so many of my friends are, where all my growth really took place in college. And also because I knew the board of directors are so fabulous at preparing their girls the best they could for the state competition in June. Ever since I was crowned, I got right to work because I did not want to waste this opportunity. And with the help of my board, we were able to do so many mock interviews, travel to meet with fellow title holders across the country, develop my stage presence and talent, work on my social impact initiative and my paperwork, and just develop that sense of confidence I needed going into Miss Iowa. But I also did a lot on my own that I'm really proud of. Since my crowning in August, I've completed more than 275 service hours and over 100 events as Miss Greater Des Moines to date. And I'm really proud of that because I wanted to make it my mission to live out the job of Miss Iowa as Miss Greater Des Moines so I could go into that competition knowing I was more than worthy, deserving, and prepared to take on this job that's been a dream of mine since I was 10 years old. And I, of course, want to thank everyone who's been there pouring into me this year. I would not be here without you and have completed all of those amazing things. So thank you to my friends, family, supporters, board members, coaches, everyone there who was just trying to lift me up to be the best Alyssa that I could be. So thank you so much. After months and months of preparation, the week was finally here, which was so surreal and still a blur, all of it. We arrived on a Wednesday and from there the week just flew by. Throughout the week, we had a lot of really fun events, whether it was doing some service projects with our princesses in the princess program or hanging out with our teen candidates who really became like sisters to me. We also got to have lunch with service organizations throughout the area, which I had actually talked to already. So it was nice to see some familiar faces that I could at least be comforted by during the week. There were of course a lot of rehearsals, which are very necessary, but very tiring, but it was also a great way to get to know some of the girls a bit better and develop those friendships even more. I met some incredible women who have achieved so much and I was so grateful to share the stage with and now call my friends. I loved having all of these activities because it made it less focused on the competition, even though that was the central reason we all were there. I had my private interview on Thursday afternoon and I still don't remember much of what happened going into it, but I also came out feeling so relieved that I started crying and that has never happened after an interview for me. I just felt so at peace with what I gave them and the peace of myself that I left with all of those judges in that room. And having that off of my shoulders just made me feel so calm going into the preliminary competition the next night. The next day we did preliminary competition, which is where everyone, both teen and miss candidates, compete in every single phase. And it was long, but it also went by really fast for me. 
And I was also at peace with everything I did on that stage. I tried to leave it all out there, show off the hard work that I've been doing. And I had so many people there to support me that it just made me feel so loved and supported. And it was great to see them after being gone for a few days when we had our celebration in the lobby. And even though I didn't win any preliminary awards, I still felt really at peace with everything that I put out on that stage. And I was really grateful to just have that experience and finally show off all the growth that I know I've made and that other people had helped me with. Huge shout out to Autumn, our preliminary talent winner, and Reagan, our evening gown winner. Um, they were both great girls and it was lovely to cheer them on from the sidelines. And of course, my teen won the Lifestyle and Fitness Award. And I'm just so stinking proud of her. I think I was just as excited as she was and getting to hug her right after was just such a sweet moment. And then we arrived on Saturday where it was the last day of the week and it really flew by. And honestly, I was kind of sad that it was all gonna be over, but I was also really excited because I knew we were gonna find out who our next Miss Iowa was. We started with our opening number production and immediately we went into cutting it down to the top eight teen finalists and the top 10 Miss finalists. And I had made the top 10 the year before, which I was really proud of, but every year I still get nervous and doubt myself before that announcement is made. So I went in not expecting anything and just really hoping that everything I showed them was what they were looking for. Next up. Miss Greater Des Moines, Alyssa Gothi. And fortunately enough, I was called into the top 10. So I got to compete in evening gown, on stage question and talent for that night. And it was so much fun. I felt confident in everything I presented yet again, if not a little better. And it was just a lot of fun to get to do everything one more time. Then after competing in those three phases was the top five announcement. And I have never been so nervous in my life. So they started calling some of the names for the top five. And I was so excited for all the girls, especially my friend Mariah, who was the first one called. I was so excited for her. And then it was getting down to the second person and then the third person and my name wasn't called yet. And I was getting more and more nervous. Whoever was holding my hands, I'm sorry. They were probably really sweaty. <laughs> And then finally, they got to the fourth person in the top five. We've got two more spots remaining in that top five. One of those is going to be filled by Miss Greater Des Moines, Alyssa Gothi. And I was so relieved and excited and grateful and I remember running up to Mariah and just hugging her so tight because that was a dream of ours was to be in the top five together. And other than that, I don't remember much else from that moment because it was such a blur, but I was just really proud of myself to at least have gotten that far and get to compete in the final phase, which was our social impact initiative pitch. And then two questions, which was the final conversation to really see if you would be the best fit for the job of Miss Iowa. I felt really confident in how both of my questions went and I loved my pitch. I was really proud of the work I put into writing that. So it was out of my hands and I had to just go on with the rest of the time when we were waiting for crowning. After some more performances and doing a production number with our evening gowns and with our princesses, we were all called back to the stage for some awards. And I was very, very grateful and surprised to win not one, but two extra awards on top of being a top five finalist. I received the People's Choice Award for the second year in a row, but this year I received a $250 scholarship as I was voted on by my friends and family. Again, I have the best support system and I literally could not have won that award without them. So thank you to everyone who came in person and supported me and also voted online to help me win that scholarship and cool trophy. The next award that I won had me absolutely floored. I won the overall interview award with a $500 cash scholarship for having the highest score in interview out of all the Miss candidates. You can see by my face how surprised I am and how shocked I was. I felt good coming out of my interview, but I never in a million years thought I would be able to win this award. And it was just so validating to know that all the work I put in and all the effort that I put into my initiative and shared with them was worth it.
being able to get recognized for all of that effort meant the world. Before the announcement of the new Miss Iowa, we crowned our Miss Iowa's Outstanding Teen. And y'all, my teen won. She is now Miss Iowa's Outstanding Teen. And I was jumping up and down, screaming. I think I turned to the person next to me and said, my face hurts from smiling so much. I know she was emotional. I was emotional. I'm just so stinking proud of her and all the work she's put in. And I know she's going to represent our state so well. And I... I immediately ran up to hug her when we were bringing the top five Miss candidates forward because I could not wait a second to celebrate her and everything that she's done. So Emily, congratulations again. I will always be here to support you and I love you so, so much. When they called the final five forward, that's when the nerves really started kicking in again. And I just remember thinking, this is it, it's go time. Whatever happens, happens. So they started calling fourth runner up, third runner up, and second runner up. And that's when I was hearing my name not be called yet. And so I made it into the final two. And I don't think I had any thoughts in my head other than please let my name be called. It was a moment I had dreamed of this whole year, but I didn't think would actually happen. So to be in it is still a blur. And I truly don't remember much except holding hands with Miss Metro, who was my sister title holder and thinking, well, it's gonna be one of us. It has to be at this point. And that's really all the thoughts I had. And then our announcer said, the next name I read will be our first runner up. And that's when my name was called. It was definitely hard to not earn the title of Miss Iowa. And there were a lot of tears the first few days and a lot of wondering why, what did I do wrong? What happened? But then I remembered why I started. This was for the 10 year old girl who joined because she wanted to sing for people. This was for the 11-year-old who needed someone like Miss Iowa to represent her and all the things she was going through. This was to make incredible friendships and earn scholarship dollars. There's so much more to it than winning a title, and it took me a few days to realize that that's exactly what I did. There's still so many emotions surrounding it, but first and foremost, I am so grateful to even be saying I was first runner-up to Miss Iowa. I am getting emotional thinking about it because I never thought that would be me. When I started competing at 10 years old, I never even saw myself competing at the Miss level, let alone to be successful. And to have had people believe in me so much and help me get to that point was everything. Ooh. And when I was diagnosed at 11, I never thought I could achieve something like this. So. To everyone who helped me get there in that final two moment, regardless of the outcome, I just cannot express how grateful I am to you enough. Because for the first time, a diabetic woman was in the final two. And that would have never happened if it weren't for everyone supporting me. I need to stop crying now. <laughs> I still have so much to be thankful for, and I truly gained so much out of this experience. I gained new friendships. I gained nearly $3,000 in scholarship money to put towards my student loans. I received validation that I am enough and that I am worthy of being Miss Iowa. And I also received that validation that I belong in this program and people like me belong in this program too. So even though there's clearly still some processing going on, I'm just so grateful. That's the only word that really comes to mind. I'm so grateful for everyone who has been on this journey with me. I'm so grateful for the supporters I have and the growth that I've been able to make. And I'm also really grateful for the lessons that I've learned. So being only 22 and having the opportunity to do it again is kind of a no-brainer to me. I have loved this organization for the past 12 going on 13 years and I'm not one to just give up on it so easily. So Miss Iowa, don't worry, I'll still be back. And on top of that, I'm excited to see what's to come with my career and everything that this program has set up for me. There's so much more to my life than pageantry, and I'm just really excited to see everything that now falls into place, having not won. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. I have no idea how long this will be, but I'd also love to do some more videos highlighting more than just my journey as a type one diabetic. I'd love to highlight my experience in this program and all the ways that it has impacted my life for the better. Until next time. Bye.